coronavirus is not the scariest thing that happened this year. The scariest thing by far has been the rise of far leftism. They've attacked our country. They've attacked all of Western civilization. They've attacked our police officers, and they're desperately trying to divide us by race. Leftism has left people as hypocrites and left people brain damaged. Look at what it did to Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah used to be a smart guy. Look what leftism has done to his brain. But guys, this has to stop, right? Or at least if you insist on a gender reveal, you should do something that helps the situation. The water's pink, it's a girl! And aside from all the damage it can cause, celebrating a baby's genitalia is starting to feel very outdated. Like given everything we're learning about gender, gender reveal parties should only happen when the child is old enough to know their actual gender and to pitch in some cash for the fire damage. And honestly, I don't even know why we need gender reveal parties. You know what we do need though? Race reveal parties. So according to Trevor Noah, parents that have a gender reveal party harms the unborn child. Think about how stupid that is. And he says, because it's complicated, for the vast majority of people, it's not complicated. For the vast majority of people, they were born male, they are comfortable being male from birth to the grave. Same thing for the vast majority of females. Born female, perfectly comfortable being female from birth to the grave. There is a small percentage of people where gender is complicated, a very small percentage. Now you might think, oh, well, that includes people that are gay. No, it doesn't. Being gay and being transgender are two different, are completely different things. There's plenty of gay men that are comfortable being men. They're not attracted to women, they're attracted to other men. They're gay, but it's not an issue about gender. Once again, percentage of people where gender is complicated, extremely small, and according to the left, we should completely mold our society based on a tiny portion of the population. It doesn't make any sense, it's insane, it's absolutely mad. When do we do that? We had a WWF wrestler, by the name of Andre the Giant, that was his wrestling name. Seven feet four, 520 pounds. Had a difficult time getting into cars because of the car seats. Difficult time in planes because of the plane seats. Now, as a society, we're not going to construct all our seats for people his size. We're not gonna do that. And there's grown adults that are three feet tall we're not going to construct everything for them. We're gonna find somewhere in the middle and try to please as many people as, as possible, but you can't go to the extremes. We're not gonna mold our society based on a tiny portion of the population. This is the same thing. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. And then the left likes to say that Gender is a completely a social construct. That's not true. It's tied to biological sex, and there's a lot of science, established science behind biological sex and physical differences and behavioral differences bet between men and women. There's a reason why when you look at violent crime, when you look at murder, predominantly it is men. And there's a reason why in the WNBA, they will they have gone complete seasons where nobody dunked the ball, but in the NBA, not only do they not go through a single game where nobody, where someone dunks the ball, but the dunks happen frequently during a single game, let alone an entire season. There's a reason for that, and it's not because of a social construct. Now let's talk about race. He says we should have race reveals. Race completely is a social construct. And let's talk about that further. So first off, what is race? How do we define it? Do we find, define it by skin tone? Okay, so if we define it by skin tone, what is Trevor Noah? What race is he? Now, I think we could all agree that Stephen Colbert is white and Chris Rock is black. So for Trevor Noah, his father was white, his mother was black, what is their race reveal party at his birth going to be? What is he going to be defined as? When you look at his skin tone, it is much closer to Steven than it is for Chris Rock. 
And whatever you decide he is going to be, and the left wants to divide the entire globe to either you're white or a person of color, and it's just those two choices, you're white or you're black and brown people. Okay, so what is Trevor Noah? Obviously, he's a lot closer to being white than being black as far as his skin tone. And whatever you say, if you say he's a person of color because he's mixed race, or you say, well, his father was white and therefore he's white, if it's based on a father, whatever you come up with, that is a human construct. Now, what about ancestry? Let's, let's talk about that. Let's see how easy it is to define somebody based on ancestry. So let's talk about ancestry. Where did your ancestors live? If they lived closer to the equator, you're going to have darker skin. If they lived farther from the equator, you're going to have lighter skin. Darker skin is better at protecting the body from sun damage. And closer to the equator, you're going to have more direct sunlight. Farther away from the equator, you get less sun, which means less vitamin D for the sun. Lighter skin is better at absorbing vitamin D but not as good as protecting the body from skin damage. So this is evolutionary. So ancestry, how far from the equator did your ancestors live? And where is that magic line that determines whether you're white or a person of color? Well, we have it. We have that magic line because if your ancestors were from France, then you're white. But if your ancestors were from Spain, then you're a person of color. And here's the border. So here's that magic line. If your ancestors were here a little bit to the north, you're white. A little bit to the south, you're a person of color. And if we follow that line, we can see in Italy, part of Italy is white, part of Italy, including Rome, you're a person of color, and we extend that. So Greece, person of color, Turkey, person of color. But wait a minute. We now define people in Italy and people of Greece, white. Why? Because not that long ago, we didn't consider people of Italy and people of Greece white. In fact, there is racism in the United States against people from Greece, people from Italy. There's actually lynchings of, of Italians um, in the late 1800s, I, I believe. So we went from saying, okay, people from Italy and people are from Greece, you're not white. But now we're going to decide that you are white. And if you can say that they're not white, now they're white. Why couldn't you just say, okay, well, now they're not white again. Now, the truth is they're not white or black. They're Mediterranean. But for political reasons, they were classified as white. But it's a completely human construct. It's completely making things up as you go along. They are in the same latitude as Spain. So why do we call people whose ancestry is in Spain people of color, but Italy, Greece, same latitude, white? It's just made up nonsense. Now, the far left who are attacking Western civilization want to classify this as white and say whites are evil, Western civilization. And obviously, when you look at the foundation uh, that provided by Greece and in, in, in Rome, Italy, to Western civilization, uh, the foundation, they want to say, oh, well, this is white, so white is evil, Western civilization is white, therefore Western civilization is evil. Well, obviously, this is not white, and it completely ignores the contributions of ancient Egypt. Without ancient Egypt, there is no ancient Greece. Greece was heavily influenced by ancient Egypt. And when you look at the contributions, the ancient Egypts that built the pyramids, the society that they had, they had organized law enforcement. They had peace treaties. They had trade. They had war. They had military. All of that stuff from early ancient civilization in, in Egypt 4,500 years ago. Greece heavily influenced by Egypt, the affluent ancient Greeks sent their kids to be educated in, in Egypt. And then they have their rule and then Italy has their rule, but really Western, the Western civilization, the foundation, you're looking at it right here. This is Mediterranean, once again, not really black or white, but once again, according to the, to, to the leftist, you have to pick one 
And we're supposed to just ignore the fact that not that long ago, we didn't consider people from Italy and, and Greece white. That is the same latitude as Spain, but we call people in Spain people of color. And we're just supposed to go along with it and also completely ignore Egypt and Africa and their great c contributions to Western society. It's absolute nonsense. And the only reason they're, they're doing it is to divide us by race and attack our country and attack Western civilization. There's nothing behind it. It's nonsense. And if we follow this parallel and we keep going and we go to China and we go to Mongolia, well, northern China and Mongolia, the people have very light skin. So we do, do we still call them people of color? Do we still call them black and brown people? But we don't call them white because they have other characteristics like the, the shape around the eyes. They have other characteristics where we don't call them white, but they're, they're certainly not people with uh, darker skin, not as dark as, as the people in Italy or Greece that we somehow now call white instead of people of color. And let's suppose a Swedish man marries a Mongolian woman or a Mongolian man marries a Swedish woman and they're gonna have a baby. And instead of the gender reveal party, they're gonna have Trevor Noah's leftist race reveal party. Well, they go to the party store, what are they supposed to get? Are they supposed to get the poppers that, that do to white or get the poppers to do the, the black and brown because everybody's just white or, or black and brown people. What do they do? Race is absolutely a human construct. All right, let's now go to Google and do a search for definition of race. And this is what comes up. Race, a grouping of humans based on shared physical or social qualities and a categories generally viewed as distinct by society. The term was first used to refer to speakers of a common language. So in other words, the term is fluid and it's changed over time. And then to denote national affiliations by the 17th century, the term began to refer to physical traits. Now, this is really disturbing. Books about race. Now, you'd expect a book about race to talk about ancestry. And maybe you have, oh, here are people from Sweden, uh, Germany. France, Poland, Russian, uh, Russia, China, Mongolia, India, Japan, Korea, Africa, and Africa is so big, you'd want to segment that out. Uh, North Africa, Central Africa, South Africa. And you expect a book like that to be a book about race, but instead look what you get. These two books right here, uh, racist books. These, This is the poison where you're either white or you're a person of color. You're either white or black or brown people. And furthermore, if you're white, you're a sinner. You are an oppressor. If you're a person of color, you are a victim. You're a victim. You are oppressed. It's, it's, it's either of those things. According to these books, a newborn baby, based on that baby's race, is either a sinner or a victim. In other words, People are superior or inferior based on race, which is the, the exact definition of racism is, what, what racism is. What we have here is racism under the disguise of anti-racism, just like today we have fascism under the disguise of anti-fascism. And it's absolutely disgusting that when you do a Google search definition of race, this disgusting crap comes up. Let's also click on the images. Let's see what it says. Okay, biological definition, a group of, or population that shares common genetics, characteristics, physical features, sociological definition, socially constructed category of people who share certain inherited physical biological traits. Race is both a myth and a reality. That's an interesting uh, way to put it. Let's say what else we can hear. So we have some stuff. Okay, not to confuse race and ethnicity. Race is a socially defined category based on real or perceived biological differences between groups of people. Ethnicity is a socially defined category based on common language, religion, nationality, history, 
or another cultural factor. So under that definition, you can have a lot of different ethnicities um, based on language, based on nationality, based on religion, but race is pretty much your, your ancestry. And then uh, let's go ahead and uh, pick out one more. Let's see about here. Uh, there's just so much stuff and you find a lot of um, different definitions and kind of different views on it. Okay, what is race? Race is a social construct, absolutely a social construct that was created to, div to drive a wedge between people and have, have been woven into every aspect of our society. Nothing in our g genetics shows that there are biological differences that can categorize people by race. The definition of race has changed over time as those in power of the narrative after the interpreta interpretation in order to suit their own needs. Okay, well, I mean, race is real. We can tell people who have ancestry for, from different places. Um, sometimes we can see that clearly, sometimes we, we can't. So obviously it's their real attributes to a person based on certain features, but the way it's being used by the left is for evil intentions. We were making a great amount of race relations progress in the late 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, before this leftist crap, before this critical race theory, that's garbage has not moved us forward. It's taken us backwards. Now we're going actually going backwards in race relations. It's terrible. And to see Trevor Noah, once again, the left, oh, gender completely is completely a social construct, but oh, we should have race reveal parties. I mean, the leftist lobotomy that poor man has had, it, it's horrible. And that's what leftism has done. And that's what leftism continues to do. It gets people brain damaged. And I just, I just hope we turn the tide because it's scary how much infiltrated our society has become with this ignorance. And obviously Trevor Noah, he has been part of that. And it's, it's sad. I hope he can uh, wake up and, and turn around, um, hopefully get his brains back. Anyway, let me know if you disagree or disagree. Did I say disagree or disagree? Disagree or, 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 or agree or disagree? This is Jim Wall. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Cisco, do we have to leave all our good friends now? Only until next time, Pancho. Adios, amigos.